Today is the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings are from Cycle A. We all wish to see a world without evil, a church without faults, to see that the real church and the real word world are not sinless and not perfect makes us impatient. Jesus reminds us today, be patient, for God is patient with the church and with the world and also with us. Let's not forget this. He gives us time to change. Let us ask Jesus in this Eucharist that we may begin the change of the world and of the church with the change of ourselves. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Joseph Church. Please stand and greet each other this fine morning. Our entrance hymn this morning, Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Good morning and welcome to the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Readings today are from Cycle C. Let us begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Lord Jesus, you came to bring justice and peace. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reveal the fullness of God's love. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to show us the way. Lord, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. And let us sing the glory of our God. Oh, yeah. 
Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Se propicio, Señor, con tus siervos, y multiplica bondadoso sobre ellos los dones de tu gracia, para que fervorosos en la fe, la esperanza y la caridad Perseveren siempre fieles en el cumplimiento de tus mandatos. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings of the Bible the Church has chosen for today's celebration. The first reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. And, but though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds, and those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The response, Lord, you are good and forgiving. forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Good. 
all the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. pity on me. Give me your strength to your servant. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. stand. be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, 
an enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? And he replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then, at time of harvest, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds, tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open their mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seeds is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. The enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. A few announcements here. I want to remind you that on our website, uh, we have various offerings for you to be in touch with the parish. So we have a mass here, nine o'clock English, Monday through Friday, and at 10 a.m. Spanish, Monday through Friday. So there's the mass schedule, Monday through Friday. That's on our YouTube channel. We're offering on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, on. Just enter down here at the end of the food bank through that uh, driveway there for masses in the garden uh, there on Saturday and Sunday. So they're at 7 o'clock English Saturday, 8.30 Spanish Saturday, and on Sunday they're both in Spanish 7 and 8.30 p.m. So it's been a great ambiance. It's been a great gathering place. Uh, The numbers haven't, I don't think we've ever hit 60 of a total of all the four masses put together, so you don't have to worry about being with a large crowd. We can accommodate uh, up to 100 there, but uh, it's, we could probably accommodate 200 there with all the space that we have. But anyway, it's a small crowd, lots of air, and it's a fairly safe environment. We sanitize everything before and after each mass. So hope to see some of you there on the weekends. You no longer need a ticket, you no longer need to sign up, but You do need to bring a piece of paper with your name, your address, your phone number, your email if you have it, and that same information for anybody in your group. Just hand that in to the security guard as you come in. And yes, you need to come with a mask and wear it throughout the mask. So I've enjoyed how the people who have kind of become the regulars there, and we get a couple new each day. I want to also underline a request that Christian Martinez and Alexis Dominguez made to you about the video's presentations here that most of the equipment I brought with me, and I'll be leaving, I don't really know when, sometime between now and the end of September, uh, and most of that equipment will be going with me. Um, Not much of it belongs to the parish. So they've requested uh, a donation from you, up to $5,500, to replace that equipment and get the 
equipment they'll need to continue bringing these masses to you. Uh, we were all set to have masses outside in the Perry Center, uh, in the Perry Center as of the 1st of August, and uh, that got canceled. So uh, we're still back to you're pretty much going to be in the garden, which won't be any fun in November, and uh, you'll be by television. And until the virus comes under control, I don't see that changing. So, okay, so uh, you have a wonderful crew of volunteers there, but they do need the equipment to pull it off. So. Uh, that, it depends on you how much uh, these uh, videos uh, mean to you, how much this way of staying in contact with the church means to you. And you still have to contribute to the regular collection as you've been doing so incredibly generously uh, just to keep the place open. And Okay. So the first Sunday of the month, as previously announced, we're going to start Masses in the Perry Center. That is no longer the case. That's been canceled by the state. So if you heard that, we've announced that, you're correct. We, please tell them we also announced that it's not going to happen, at least as of right now. Okay, let's begin uh, this homily as we begin always, Ad Maiorum Dei Gloriam, for the greater glory of God, Ad Maior Gloria de Dios. And I put this one under the category of spirituality, and I called it Throw Them Into the Fire. A little bit of fire and brimstone here, huh? So throw them into the fire. So we're into the agricultural community, we're into agricultural uh, parables. So last week, the uh, sower is sowing on the way and the various uh, fertility and the rocks and the thorns and the good seed. And now we're into weeds, which we all know if we've done any gardening. And the weed here that Jesus talks about, it looks almost identical to a wheat. Uh, so you know, it, what is a weed? What is a weed? Well, here's one definition. When you're weeding, the best way to make sure you're removing a weed and not a valuable plant is to pull on it. If it comes out of the ground easily, it's a valuable plant. Or to distinguish flowers from weeds, simply pull up everything, and what grows back is weeds. So Jesus tells this parable. It's a pretty simple parable. Thus it will be at the end of the ages. The angels will go out and spread the wick separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. So we have that parable today as part of the long gospel. That was chap Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30. So what more is there to do with that parable? You know, uh, Jesus explained it, it's pretty clear, but uh, let's go on a little bit further on this and say, uh, you know, he did mention, hmm, all who do evil. Ooh, whoops. Well, got to think about that. Uh, who's he got in mind, uh, huh? I hope I'm not. I hope I'm not a weed. Well, murderers probably. Yeah, rapists, adulterers, sure. Thieves, or does fibbing on your income tax recount? Does that count? Or gossiping, particularly if it borders on uh, bearing false witness, does that count? Or how about those sins of omission, they say? Omission, I don't do what I'm supposed to do. Uh, what about those who ignore their neighbor who is in need? Are those weeds? How about those who donate only a pittance to God after God has been so generous to them? Whether that's time or treasure or talents. St. Paul, I think, uh, really nails it when he says there in the letter to the Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned, all have sinned and are deprived of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption in Christ Jesus. All have sinned. Well, if that day comes when God is really going to start pulling out the weeds, I really don't want to just depend on my own virtues. But still, having said that, uh, we need to take this lesson about the weeds seriously. So pulling weeds is an important part of a successful life. There was a World Series of Weeds. Uh, actually, it wasn't a World Series of Weeds. It was at uh, the Western Kentucky University. And uh, they invited, uh, they had a competition on identifying weeds. And they had students coming from all over universities in this area of agriculture, uh, coming from Canada and the United States. And the students there I uh, jokingly called it the World Series of Weeds or the Hula Bowl of Herbicides. And uh, the head of that uh, said it was extremely important 
So he, that's why he had gathered people from so many parts of the U.S. and of Canada. And he said, you know, when weeds get big enough that anybody can recognize them, then it's too late to do anything about them. When weeds get big enough that anybody can recognize them, then it's too late to recognize them. So how many parents have been too late recognizing the weeds growing in the life of their young person? Weeds like drugs, depression, running with the wrong crowd. How many adults have recognized too late that vices like alcohol or tobacco or gambling or pornography or some other addiction has them in its grasp? Or even more likely, even more likely, how many adults have recognized too late negative attitudes, bitterness, Resentment, bigotry. Well, we don't talk much about those things in church, do we? No, we don't want to be uh, too judgmental of other people. But maybe we should talk more about these weeds that uh, spoil, weaken, destroy our human existence. Lives are still being destroyed. Hearts are still being broken. Relationships are being torn. And here's the sad thing. Here's the sad thing. The people whose lives are being choked by these weeds are, for the most part, not bad people. They're good people. They are good people who simply weren't vigilant about pulling up those weeds. God is the gardener who wants to pull out the weeds of our life. It's not God's will that any of his children should suffer. God wants to help. Regardless of what a mess our lives in at any point, God can turn that mess into a masterpiece. And this is the meaning of the cross. God wants to save us from the power of sin. In this world, in this world, as well as the world to come. Too many th people think the cross is about getting people into heaven. Uh, the reason God hates sin is that it hurts God's children. All of the sins that destroy people, destroy families, destroy relationships, destroy human potential. God wants to root them out. God wants to pull them out and throw them in the fire. This is the meaning of the cross. God wants to restore us to the beautiful creation God intended from the first for us to be. Please stand for the creed, the profession of faith. We'll be using the Nicene Creed today. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead.
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Very good. So let us join together. Let's join together our hearts and minds as we offer our prayers. And we do not know how to pray properly. So let the Holy Spirit express our plea for the good of the church and of everyone. And let us say, Lord, keep us in your love. Lord, keep us in your love. And let's begin with the intention of the Holy Father for this month. La familia tiene que ser protegida. Son muchos los peligros a los que están enfrentados. El ritmo de vida, el estrés. A veces los padres se olvidan de jugar con sus hijos. La iglesia tiene que animar y estar al lado de la familia, ayudándolas a descubrir caminos que le permitan superar todas las dificultades. Crecemos para que las familias en el mundo de hoy sean acompañadas con amor, respeto y consejo y de modo especial sean protegidas por los estados. And so let us pray that today's family may be accompanied with love, respect and guidance and be supported by the state. For this we pray to the Lord. And there's no intention for this Mass. Deacon? Lord, hear our prayer. For patience that we may not judge one another, but rather be open to the work of, that God is doing within each of us that will be revealed in God's time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deepening of prayer, that we may offer our discontent, pain, and yearnings to God honestly and allow the Spirit to intercede for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom, that we may recognize the small ways that God is at work in our lives so that we may cooperate with God who accomplishes great things. We pray to the Lord. For healing and transformation of our weakness, that the Spirit of God will work within us to bring us to wholeness in the areas in which we are most wounded and vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. I'd like to pray for those who are struggling against racism, that we can find a way to harness all the positive energies and opportunities in our communities and our nation and our world. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray also in this time of the coronavirus. Let's pray for the health workers who are so very much on the front lines of the risk. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us remember, of course, those who have recently died. Let us pray for Peter Gire, for Graciela Cerda, Victoria Vigil, Elisa Garcia, 
Cristo vos cruz. For all these we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. Almighty God, let your Holy Spirit prepare in us joy for the day when you will harvest the seeds you have sown among us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Please be seated for the stewardship message and the preparation of the gifts.
Anyway, my sisters and brothers, let this sacrifice mine and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion buried offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each is offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Dios nuestro que con la perfección de un único sacrificio pusiste fin a la diversidad de sacrificio de la antigua ley, recibe las ofrendas de tus fieles y santificalas como bendijiste la ofrenda de Abel, para que aquello que cada uno te ofrece en honor y tu gloria sea de provecho para la salvación de todos, through Christ our Lord. And may the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence or even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes your pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joys of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. So with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Calling to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and what is once for the disciples. So now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before his suffering, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. 
We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called this to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead in faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come into an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Ignatius, Loyola, and Rose de Wachain, with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, where the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. It's let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace with Jesus. And Claire. Mind this stand. I this.
the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Let us pray. 
graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Señor, muéstrate el benigno con tu pueblo, y ya que te dignaste alimentado con los misterios celestiales, hazlo pasar de su antigua condición de pecado y una vida nueva. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. I have a letter to read you from the bishop. Dear friends, some months back, your pastor, Father Thomas Bennell S.J., announced his upcoming departure. I will miss his friendship, his intellectual acumen, and his pastoral heart. His departure is a tremendous loss for us all. But he's left us many gifts through his service as a priest that will endure for years to come. Sad as I am to see him leave, I'm also happy to announce your new pastor, Father Rogelio Gutierrez. Most recently, Father Gutierrez has served as pastor of St. Francis de Sales in Chelan and St. Anne in Bridgeport, as well as the mission of St. Mary in Mansfield. Originally, Father Gutierrez hails from Mexico in the state of Michoacan. But he's no stranger to Sunnyside either. He worked here as a manager for a fruit packing plant here prior to becoming a priest and being ordained for the Diocese of Yakima. So as we thank Father Bunnell for his many years of service, please join me in welcoming Father Gutierrez as well. Key to so many of these moves are the departure of Father Bunnell and the extended leave of absence for Father Bill Vogel, S.J. from Zilla, if he is able to return, he'll be assigned to assist in another parish. The Jesuits are not able to send a replacement for Father Bunnell. I hope you will pray for more vocations to the priesthood as we assume pastoral leadership of all 40 parishes with only Yakima Dias clergy for the first time in our history. With every best wish and blessing, yours in Christ, Most Reverend Joseph J. Tyson, Bishop of Yakima. I pretty much did the announcements for you. Uh, just there's one more left there, the office being closed. So uh, we do answer the phone, we try to answer the email. The rest of the announcements about masses. The food bank is now open as of uh, this week. So uh, you know, from nine to 12, I wanna thank uh, the crew is back and they've got some uh, volunteers, but especially thanks to Blanca Hernandez. So really grateful for that uh, ministry being open again. So very good. So, uh, the other food bank is open. I met, talked to them about a month and a half ago now, too, um, over right by the War Memorial. So they were open on Friday. So uh, they both follow the same procedure. You have to come up, you stay in your car, and you open up your trunk, and they'll put the food inside the trunk. So they won't put things inside the car. Okay, that's it. So may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come to us all and remain forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Our closing hymn, 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord. Please join in. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. 